Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about Dragonflight Engineering. Now, I will warn you right now that this is probably the most complicated and complex profession of Dragonflight, so we have a lot to cover. But hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a way better understanding of this profession. Now, as always, because this video will likely be a little bit longer, feel free to go grab a snack, grab some breakfast, grab a coffee, whatever you have to do to make yourself comfortable, and I hope you enjoy the video. Also, as always, I have to state this, this video is a part of my bigger Dragonflight series where I am covering all professions. This is actually the third to the last one left. So if you guys want more information about a specific profession, it is likely already out there or be here in just a few days. But everybody, thank you so much for watching and let's get into the video. So up first, let's talk about what you're going to be doing in this profession and give you some pros and cons about it. And so the first pro that we have is that there is a ton of variety. I already stated that, you know, this profession has a lot to it and that is good. That means there is a lot to craft and I like to joke around because engineering really hasn't gotten any sort of love in the past few expansions. So the devs felt bad and decided to give everything to engineers. But overall, it is really nice. And if you are somebody who wants to cover a ton of different markets, this is for you. And going along with that, our second pro is not only is there a lot of variety, but there's also a ton of utility. You guys may or may not be familiar with some utility factors from previous expansions. We have the wormhole generator that allows you to go to different places really fast around the map. We have a lot of different battle reses, things like that that is still here, but also there's a lot more. So if you're looking for a profession not just to make gold, but also help you out as a player, this is the profession for you. Now, with that being said, we do have some cons. Now, of course, these might not be a big deal depending on, you know, who you are, but I just do want to point them out. The first one is that if you are indecisive, this is not going to be the profession for you. Like I have stated a ton already, there is a ton of different things to go over, meaning you have to make the decision on what you want to focus on at first. Because of the knowledge point system and all of that, you can't do everything, you eventually can, but at the start, you gotta get picky. Also, with that being said, there is a ton of intermediate crafts and just kind of crafting complexity. I like to kind of relate this to inscription if you have seen my inscription video, but there is a lot of intermediate parts that you have to craft, different things for different items, and it's just a lot going on. So, you know, if you don't really like to AFK craft much, this might not be for you either. Then lastly, I think this is the biggest con for most people, is that utility has been slightly nerfed. Now I'm going to cover this more once we start going over recipes and recommended builds, but I did mention that wormhole generator, so let's talk about that real quick. Traditionally, especially in Shadowlands, you guys are used to just picking up engineering, either buying or crafting the wormhole generator for yourself, and then you are good to go. You know, you just quickly slap engineering on all of your characters, and that's it. Now technically, that is how Dragonflight works as well, but there is a catch. By default, the wormhole generators no longer work how they used to. If you just pick up the profession and use the wormhole generator, that means you're going to be teleported to a random location, which of course is not very useful. And the only way to fix that is to spec into the path that helps with this toy, which means, you know, that's a lot harder to do on alts. So do not be scared by that, it's okay, we're going to talk about that more, but just a heads up, utility is still there, it's just a little bit harder to get. And so with that being said, let's talk about the requirements of this profession. Now up first, as always, we have reputation. And very similar to most professions, you are going to have to focus on two different main factions. You will have to rep grind for the Dragon Scale Expedition, as well as the Centaurs. Now you guys will see the items on screen. Now, of course, you don't really know what these items are yet, but a lot of them are either toys or they are used for profession tools and accessories. So ultimately, depending on what you're trying to focus on, you may not need to necessarily grind this rep, but it's something to keep in mind. 
Now you guys will likely notice is that you also need a ton of Artisan's Consortium rep. Now a lot of it comes from preferred or respected, which is not super high rep grinds, which is nice, but you will definitely want to farm this reputation. Moving on, let's talk about profession equipment. Now you guys may notice right off the bat that once again, engineer is kind of one of the self-sufficient professions as well. As always, this profession is a primary profession, meaning you'll be able to equip two accessories as well as one profession tool. Those being the Kazgarite Brainway Amplifier, as well as the Kazgarite Encased Samoflange. I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation, but those can be crafted by engineers. So you may have the opportunity to craft those for yourself, or of course, you'll order it through the crafting order system. Also, the missing accessory comes from leatherworking, which is not very shocking either. And speaking of shocking, it is the shockproof gloves. So of course, if you have a leather worker, once again, you can craft this for yourself, or you'll have to be going through the work order system. Moving forward, before we take a dive into all of the recipes, let's actually talk about reagents. Now, very similar to blacksmithing, if you watched that video, this profession highly relies on ore, which is not super surprising. It normally always does, but it is still the case in Dragonflight. So the three ores that you will need to be focusing on primarily is Servite ore. This will be your base ore for almost all crafts. Then you have Draconium as well as Kazgarite. Depending on the type of craft you're doing, you may use more than others, but honestly, the base of everything is your Servite ore. Now, the other big material that you will likely be focusing on is the different Awakens Elementals. This is the new elemental reagent used in almost all crafting professions, so it's not very surprising, but these do exist, and they're very similar to primals back in TBC and items like that. Now, what really makes engineering unique in terms of crafting is all of the different intermediate parts that you have to craft. Now, I think this is best explained in game, so we're going to transition in game and talk about that in just one second, but that is kind of the major part of engineering. You have to craft bolts, which can be crafted into gears, and so on and so forth, and that is where this complexity really shines in engineering. But that's really it in terms of reagents, you're really just using those elemental reagents and ore, and so let's dive in to the recipes. And so up first, automatically, you will notice that there is a little bit of a difference in a UI if you have seen my previous videos. Today, there was actually an update to the beta, and so now they are separating the learned category versus the unlearned. So because of that, I've tried to unlearn every single recipe so we can go down this list, you know, very easily, but I do apologize for that change. And so right here, when we were talking about those parts, this is kind of the baseline of all engineer crafts. You of course have your handful of servite bolts, which once again uses that servite ore. So this is your kind of most basic crafting reagent that you'll be crafting a ton of. Going into the part section right here, up next you have coils, which once again uses that elemental item as well as bolts to craft these. Then you also have gears. Once again, you can realize those reagents. Then you have blasting powder, you have safety fuses, you have machine chassis, and lastly, you have an arc light capacitor. Feel free to pause at any moment if you want to look at certain recipes or anything like that. But all of these different parts are utilized in almost every single craft. Now we're gonna go back to this, but this is the wormhole generator, which I was talking about before. I have this recipe learned, which is why it's up here, but we'll come back to this um, but this is what this item is. Up next, as always, we have our list of finishing reagents, which are just items that can be applied to different items to help your crafting abilities. Up next, you have different optional reagents, which will likely be very important. These will allow you to, you know, have your tinkers malfunction less. This will allow you to prevent tinkers exploding at all. This will give you some healing ability. And once again, this just deals with tinkers malfunctioning yet again. And so with all of that tinker talk, you probably are like, what in the world is she talking about? And this is a new system with Dragonflight, which is going to be very, very exciting. 
These are new items that can be slotted into your engineered crafting gear, and they do something a little bit special. For example, this one right here, you place an item down, and if a player enters its detection radius, then you will be alerted, which is pretty cool. Now, the most important one is right here, and this is your battle res. So I kind of mentioned that with, you know, the variety up first, but this is what a lot of people are going to want to get their hands on. You have the ability to revive a player, and they get 60% of their health and 20% mana back. So this is your battle res for anybody who, you know, is looking for one. Once again, these all can be slotted in with very different techniques. So I will let you just read these along, but these are the different items that you likely want to be crafting. Up next, we have goggles. So engineers are known for their goggles. However, this time around, they are pretty exciting. Now we're going to start at the bottom, and so you basically have a blue version, and then you have your epic version, um, and you have four for each class type. Now the interesting thing right here is, as you can see, you have that tinker socket. So you'll be able to put in one of these items to these goggles to help improve their ability. But you have your plate one right here, you have your cloth, you have your leather, and lastly, you have your mail. Now these same things, these just have different names, but these are your more epic quality versions. However, you will notice that these items only have one random stat. Now I apologize, I am not super in-depth inside kind of the high-end content meta or anything about that. I'm not a Raider or a Mythic Plus player at all, but to my knowledge, this is super beneficial to people who are trying to prioritize a different stat or a specific stat but these items are unique as they only have one bonus or random stat. Same thing applies, these all have tinker sockets, which will be very awesome. Now moving on, we have something slightly new in Dragonflight as well. And not only is the engineers going to be making goggles, but we also have bracers. Once again, one for every, you know, armor type, but right here, yet again, these only have one random stat and they also have that tinker socket. So, to my knowledge, these can be very beneficial to some people, but that means if you're wearing, you know, goggles and you're also wearing bracers, that means you will have two tinkers available to slot in to your equipment. Now, one note I do want to bring up is that these bracers can be worn by anybody. As you can see, there is no requirement here. However, goggles can only be worn by engineers. So that is a downside of goggles, you know, you can only wear this if you're an engineer, but everybody can get their hands on the bracers. Moving forward, we have our guns. So all the hunters out here, these will be for you. Of course, you have your basic, more blue version, and then of course, you have your epic version. These do have two random stats, you can look at the crafting cost, but to anybody who is looking for those gun items, this is for you. Moving forward, we have a new sort of optional reagent, which is your cogwheels. Now we'll talk about this more in our recommended builds, but these just apply a specific stat. So for example, right here, if you want to, you know, make sure that that secondary stat is versatility, you will need to use this optional crafting reagent. Same thing, this is for haste, this is for critical strike, and the first one is for mastery. Going back to those armor pieces, if you wanted to actually utilize those cog wheels, you would put them in right here in the Amplify Secondary Stat. I don't actually have it unlocked right now, but this is where you would use them. Moving forward, we have our ranged weapon enhancements. Starting at the bottom, we have this, you know, permanently enchant a ranged item, and you will gain a secondary stat for 30 seconds every time you jump. So kind of pretty unique enhancements. Secondly, you have the ability to, you know, replace your ammunition with sharp needles, and this allows you to apply bleed to a target. So once again, just some fancy techniques. This one right here will allow you to cause fire damage in an explosive range, and then you have two other weapon enchants. You can read exactly what these says, but you have one right here, and then you have your high scanner, probably what people want to get their hands on the most, and this increases a secondary stat by a lot. Then, just kind of getting into the fun stuff, you have some fire flights, which are just kind of, you know, fireworks, nothing super crazy. Um, these are sometimes locked behind reputation, but these are just for fun, nothing spectacular. 
And then we get into the very interesting explosives. So if you're somebody who likes to do a lot of things in the open world, this is going to be for you. And so when talking about explosives, we have two different versions. We have our dangerous bombs, which are kind of like the grease grenade, the sticky warp grenade, things like that. And then we have our more easy or safer bombs, which is our easy throws right here. Now, these kind of relate to different specializations, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, but the biggest difference is, is if we look at the normal gravitational displacer, this requires engineering. Now, all of these do very cool different, you know, abilities. This one will allow you to pull all enemies within 10 yards to its location, but if we look at the easy throw one, it does the same exact thing, but this doesn't require engineers. So you kind of have these two categories. You have the engineering version and then the non-engineering version. You'll notice that the crafting cost is quite different just because this should be a little bit harder to make. Now we're gonna talk about these all more in depth, you know, a little bit later, but you can make these crates, which will give you, you know, a random assortment of bombs. And then you have this big explosive zone strike. Now this is interesting because it has a day cooldown and you do need engineering, but these are kind of like the fun utility things. You can call a huge airstrike doing 160,000 damage at a quality two. And you know, this will just do crazy damage in a specific area. Still continuing on right here, you guys can just read the different tooltips, but to anybody who wants to have some fun, this is going to be for you. Moving on, we have devices. Now these are kind of unique. Um, these are kind of all of the different toys, the all of the different utility items that you can craft. Now the first one, if we go back up here, is that wormhole generator. This is a toy, so you only need to craft slash learn it once, and this will allow you to travel around the Dragon Isles. Now you'll notice this is a random location unless you specialize into it to allow you to warp to a specific location. So that is where this big utility nerf is. You can't just learn it anymore. You also have to specialize in it. Going back to the unlearned ones, we have a very important item, which is this soul inhaler. Now, giving the tooltip, it doesn't seem like much. It just says, you know, you're going to drain an elemental and then you'll be able to get a soul. And you're probably like, what in the world is this? But if we move over to this vendor right here, sorry, this vendor right here, these are the souls, which are very high end crafted items that you are going to be creating. Now, anybody can use these, so everybody will likely, you know, want to get their hands on them. So this could be a good market for a lot of people. But this right here is how you get these different souls. Up next, a huge utility item that people are going to want to get their hands on as well is the savior. Now, as it sounds, you'll be able to place this on the ground. And this means you can resurrect all party members within a distance of this item. So if you place this down and then there is a wipe and everybody dies, then this can kick in and res everybody who is nearby. So a lot of people will likely want to use these and keep in mind these are stackable in one-time uses. You will notice that multi-crafting works here. So this could be a big market for a lot of those high-end players. Up next, we just have some fun, you know, toy items or so. You guys can read these. Um, I'm not going to focus a ton on them, but these are just kind of different toys and everything that you can have. Um, nothing super special, but then you also have the Tinker Removal Kit. This will allow you to remove one of those Tinker modules. So if you decide, hey, I don't want this anymore, you can definitely remove it. Next up, probably one of the top three most important devices is your portable benches. So as you guys know, with crafting in the Dragon Isles and in Dragon Flight, you have to use the crafting benches, which are kind of scattered around the world, but mostly in that major city. So if you're like randomly killing mobs in the open, you're not going to be able to craft anything because you're not by a crafting station. But good news for the alchemist and engineers is that you can actually have a portable bench. So if you're an alchemist going right into a raid and you say, oh shoot, I forgot my potions, you can craft some on the side, which is very nice. So once again, these are just nice utilities. You can throw these up on the auction house and people will likely want them. Then lastly, you just have this immune sort of item right there. So nothing spectacular. 
Now, I know this is a ton, I am sorry for the information overload, but we are almost done. Up next, we have our profession equipment, which is pretty standard. Now, in terms of engineers, a lot of people rely on you. You'll be providing best-in-slot equipment for five different professions, and you can see them right here. So, a lot of people will want these items, which could be a good market. But, as always, you have that brainwave amplifier, which is for us engineers. You have a mining helmet. You have another engineering tool. You have a fishing tool. You have a jewel crafting tool, and even... Didn't click on it, there you go, a tailoring tool. And then of course, more mining, so on, and you have your lesser quality versions. So if you're somebody who is interested in profession equipment, then you should be very happy. And so lastly, that brings us to our final items, which are some fun ducks, because who doesn't love ducks? And the first one is Quacky, which is just the cutest companion, the cutest battle pet I have ever seen. And I know I definitely want this item. But right here, we can have a battle pet that follows you and stares at you into battle. And if you don't like this duck enough, you can make the duck away, you know, decoy right there. And this is actually a duck who will fight for you. So if you're somebody who wants, you know, a robotic duckling to help you out, this will distract all of the enemies in the area and then explode. So if you guys are a duck lover, this might make you sad because it explodes, but it can definitely be your new friend. And with all of that said and done, that is all of the recipes we have for engineering. Once again, I apologize for the information overload, but feel free to take a break if you need to and come back to the rest of this video. But before we get into those recommended builds, let's talk about leveling. Now, I kind of have bad news for you. It's not so much bad news, but in terms of other professions, you can't get as far with engineering. Remember, trainer learned recipes only get you so far in the leveling process, and for engineers, that is only level 50. Now, technically, that is okay, because at level 50, you will be able to unlock two out of your four profession trees, so you're technically not at a huge disadvantage, but you know, you're only halfway there, so it is going to be a little bit longer to actually reach out your max skill. Now, as you are following this leveling route, you're going to gain about 13 knowledge points. So yet again, kind of on the low side, but it's okay, you can make up for it for crafting other things, but that is kind of how this leveling process works. Keep in mind, things are still changing daily. I just told you how they have changed the UI with that unlearned and learned category, so I wouldn't be surprised if leveling kind of changes within the next few weeks. But as long as you keep an eye on the spreadsheet down below, I will try my best to always have that updated with the latest information. And so with all of that talk done, we can actually talk about recommended builds. Now, I do want to make a huge note before we get started. Up first, let me go over the general disclaimers. Keep in mind that once you utilize points, they are permanent. You will see right here that I have 30 points into optimized efficiency, and I cannot get rid of this. So even if I made a mistake and realized, oh, I didn't want to spend, you know, my 30 points here, there's nothing I can do. So once you've used your points and hit that apply changes button, it is permanent. Now, the good news is, is even if you make a mistake, it is okay because you can learn everything. So, you know, I have all of the trees unlocked now and I can put as many points as I want in all trees, of course, as long as I have knowledge points. So you can learn and max out absolutely everything. It will just take time. Now, in terms of my specific engineering kind of disclaimer is there is a ton of options. I'm going to go over some basic kind of generalized suggestions, but please feel free to mix and match. I'm not saying these are the best to go for, but if you're trying to highlight a specific piece of armor or specific utility, these might be the best routes or suggested routes. But please don't feel like you have to do these and you can mix and match to your heart's desire. It's very hard with so many different complex pieces of this profession to really give you the best route. And so to get started, let's talk to our non gold makers and let's talk to our utility people. If you're somebody who is looking to use those wormholes, this is going to be the category for you. The first thing you're going to have to do is unlock mechanical mind. 
and this will instantly allow you to create the wormhole generator. So you can sell this to make some profit. You could of course buy this item too, but this is a nice perk to have. Now, technically this is not really what you're kind of putting points into this tree for. You are trying to get to 20 points in. Once we have 20 points in, the cooldown of your wormhole generator is reduced by 50%, which is a huge bonus to have and makes this toy a lot better. On the way, you're also going to be able to use portable workbenches for twice as long, which is very nice, and you'll also be able to use spare parts, finishing reagents, super cool as well, but really, kind of this halfway point is what you want. Then, kind of still targeting that teleportation toy, you will want to unlock novelties, and you will want to max this whole subspec out. Once you are here, the final thing right here is that you are actually able to tell the wormhole generator where you want to go. So honestly, sadly, this is kind of how you make that toy actually useful. Without these 30 points into novelties, this is just a toy that is randomly going to teleport you to a random location, which is really not beneficial. So in order to actually unlock this, this means you're going to have to put at least 10 points in but I recommend 20 for that cooldown reduction and another 30. So honestly, to make the best wormhole generator, that is 50 points, which once again is a very large commitment. Now you'll also get some other bonuses along the way. You're gonna unlock a lot of toys. You can do firework stuff. Um, nothing super crazy to be honest, but if you are a collector, you wanna craft a bunch of toys, you're also gonna get that through this tree. But if you're somebody focusing on that generator, it's going to cost you 50 points. Now, kind of continuing on with utility, if you want to finish this mechanical mind tree out, so put in another 20 points, maxing us out to 70 points spent, you're also going to unlock the savior, which is that robot, which will allow you to kind of undo a team wipe. Now, of course, you know, you can just buy these and order them, so you don't necessarily have to craft them yourself, but if you're trying to be self-sufficient, this is likely another path you want to take. Of course, you're also going to be able to learn some additional things. Right here, you'll be able to do another finishing reagent, and this will allow you to actually have a less likelihood of tinkers and bombs exploding in your face. This is a great time to mention that yes, you are an engineer, goblins are clumsy, and because of that, a lot of these devices, explosives, tinkers, can explode and malfunction, which is not very good. However, as you spec through your trees, you'll be able to lessen that. And so yeah, that is kind of the utility tree. If you're somebody who is very focused on the wormhole generator, that is what you want to spec into. Now, just to kind of finish off the mechanical mind tree, let's say you are somebody who really wants to focus on tinkers. Tinkers, remember once again, are those slottable items right here. Now, of course, remember that these can malfunction, which is of course, not always good. And so if you are somebody who wants to focus on these tinker items, you're immediately going to want to spec into inventions. Now, because we've already kind of put points into here, we can immediately learn this, but you may have to spec into, you know, the first 10 points if you're not going the wormhole generator route. But once you unlock this tree, immediately you'll be able to have your tinkers no longer catastrophically malfunction. Now they can still malfunction, but they're not going to explode in your face and kill you. Then five more points in, right there, once again, you're going to reduce your likelihood of malfunctioning even more, and then you're just going to gain more skill, and right here, 20 points in, is a huge one. This will allow you to create the arc light Vital Correctors, which is that Battle Res Tinker. So if you're somebody who wants to produce this or craft this yourself, this is your main goal, which is 20 points in. Then you'll gain more resourcefulness, other things. Right here, you will once again gain a reduction in your malfunctioning capabilities. And lastly, you will unlock the Super Collide, which is just another sort of tinker. But if you're somebody who is focusing on these items, this is the path for you. Stepping away from those tinkers as well as utility, we have armor. And this is where the function over form is going to be very important. 
Now, of course, you need to apply five points in order to unlock a sub spec, and I recommend going the gear route first. Technically, you could go gears for gear, but I'll explain why in just a second. Once you unlock this, so five points in, you will immediately be able to have the chance of discovering bracers as you craft other items. So you're probably like, what? But if we go back, remember bracers are those sort of items that everybody can wear. And right here, you can see that this, that this is crafted through discovery. So you have to craft goggles, guns, or other bracers. And if you're specced into the specific tree, you will have the ability to potentially learn this recipe. So once again, it's a little bit harder to unlock, but this is going to be very important to get as soon as you're started. As you put more points in, you know, you will gain more skill for your combat equipment. You'll be able to use reagents and increase its power. You'll be able to use finishing reagents. You'll be able to use missives. So just all of these sort of optional reagents, more resourcefulness, more inspiration. And lastly, you can empower your guns with embellishments. So once again, this is just kind of making sure you can apply all of the optional reagents. So once again, I would recommend maxing this out if you want to focus on these types of items. Now, once you have this all sorted, if you put 10 more points into here, you'll be able to unlock gears for gear. And so what this tree does is it focuses on those cog wheels. So right here, kind of that same sort of discovery system, as you craft the greased up gears, which is a basic part, you have a chance to discover cog wheel recipes. So if you guys don't remember, greased up gears is just a very simple part that you'll be crafting a ton of. And with this unlocked, you'll be able to discover these items when crafting. But these cog wheels are the items that will allow you to specify the specific secondary stat that you want on your goggles as well as your bracers. As you put in more points, you're going to gain some additional stats. You're going to unlock some additional optional reagents. You're going to be able to use finishing reagents um, right here. You know, if your tinkers fail, you'll be able to gain schematics. So gain recipes for failing, which is super awesome. And then as always, more multi-craft. And lastly, you'll be able to actually use cogwheels in your bracers. So once again, very, very important. This will allow you to unlock cog wheels, but in order to actually use them, you have to max out the specialization. So to wrap that up, this is 35 points. Combining that with 15, that is immediately 50 points. And then that is another 30. So in order to kind of max out this section of the tree, that is going to take 80 points. Now, let's say, okay, you're not very focused on armor, you just kind of want to go for consumables, what sort of things do you want to focus on? And that is where this kind of right, lonely little subspec comes in. Now, these items, once again, depending on your spec, you can either just, you know, if we start over, you can apply five points and unlock this subspec, or you, of course, you will have to fill out the rest of this tree in order to learn all three subspecs, but either way, you're going to want to unlock the utility ability. This trait is dealing with those scopes and ammunition. So if you're somebody who wants to focus on those ranged weapons enchants right here, or those, you know, different enchants for auto attacks and stuff like that, anything in this category, this is the tree for you. You're going to actually unlock those recipes that we just highlighted, gain resourcefulness, once again, unlock more recipes, gain skill, more recipes, gain multi-craft, and lastly, be able to use finishing reagents and crafting those items. So if you're somebody focusing on consumables, things to mass sell on the auction house, this is kind of the tree for you. Lastly, I swear we're almost towards the end, we have the bomb section. So if you're somebody who wants to focus on explosives, which is that category right here, this is going to be the tree for you. Now I'm going to try to speed run this slightly, but this first category is just for your general bomb making. You're going to gain the ability to craft all of these items 15% faster. You'll be able to learn a subspec, of course. You'll be able to handle these bombs better so they don't actually explode on you, or at least reduce the likelihood of them exploding. Then you will be able to reduce their cooldown, gain resourcefulness, you know, have your damage dealt increased, and lastly, be able to craft that massive airstrike that you can do once per day. So if you're somebody who is just trying to, you know, create better explosives, 
be able to use better explosives, you will want to max this all out. Up next, we have the Easy Tree, which is the bombs that anybody can use, non-engineers and engineers. And this will allow you to actually unlock these items. Once again, a huge other factor of discovery. And so as you craft bombs, you will gain the ability to potentially learn the easy version of that bomb. So in order to unlock those non-engineer versions, you have to craft the engineer version. But as you max this out, you're going to gain bonus skill and stats. You'll be able to actually use finishing reagents. And then lastly, you'll be able to create the silent crate. This is that special crate that you can craft once a day. And if you use it, let me find it right here. You can open it and gain an assortment of different bombs. Moving to the middle one, we have the same exact thing, but for the more dangerous, you know, the engineering specific bombs. So right here, you can, you know, handle your death traps, reduce your likelihood of bombs exploding. Then you'll be able to recover parts from different bombs. You can, you know, blow up different creatures and that will give you your meat piles, which you can dig through, kind of gruesome. Then you can gain additional stats as always, finishing reagents, and then lastly, you'll be able to unlock that crate, which will give you the engineering bombs instead of the easy bombs. And then once again, you have a generic tree, which will just grant you the ability to gain plus stats for all of your bomb crafting. Then as you craft regular bombs, you will have the small chance of actually gaining additional easy bombs, which is pretty cool. And then lastly, you'll be able to use finishing your agents on these bombs. So that's kind of my speed run. If you're somebody focused on this category, you kind of have the overall performance, overall crafting, dangerous bombs, and then easy bombs. And let's move on to the final tree. And so I swear this is the final part, and this is kind of your overall generic engineering tree. If you put points in this category, you're going to gain overall skill and stat bonuses, as well as a few unique features. You're going to gain ability to, you know, speed up your process, gain additional bonus stats, you know, you can pause if you want to read them, and right here, a huge gain in inspiration. If you go the pieces part route, you're going to be able to use finishing reagents when creating parts, which is very nice, increase, you know, your skill for crafting reagents, and so on and so forth. And right here, as you create parts, you have a small chance of receiving a random rousing element, which can be very nice to kind of increase your value of crafting parts. Up next, we have the scrapper, which is kind of cool if you're kind of in that bomb range of items, but this will allow you, so if you use tinkers, which are, you know, the slottable utilities, or you throw bombs, you will gain the ability to recover a piece of scrap. Now the pieces of scrap, I kind of skipped over this at the beginning, but you can rummage through those scrap pieces you get in order to get additional junk. So if you kind of want to play that sort of scavenging system, this is for you. As always, you're going to gain additional bonuses, resourcefulness. You can, once again, you can increase your scavenging. You kind of can pause whatever. You can unlock the ability to craft that inhaler. You know, once again, you can pause and read these. But overall, it's just very nice improvements. Then lastly, finally, you have your most basic system, which is your generalist. You're going to gain a speed boost, going to gain additional resourcefulness, crafts for everything, and so forth. You're going to be able to reduce the bombs or tinkers malfunctioning, and then just lastly, more stats. And so with that being said, that is everything we have for engineering. Now, like I said, this was a ton of information, so if I did not say something very clearly, you know, I potentially missed something or did not describe something well, feel free to let me know and I'll try my best to get you the best information in the comments down below. This is a ton of different items, so if you want to know more about a specific one, feel free to let me know, or if you just have, of course, generalized questions or really whatever you need. As always, everybody, I appreciate you spending probably, you know, your last 40 minutes with me. Hopefully this was useful. And of course, the last two professions are coming out very soon. But that is all that we have for today. So once again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good day.